What's up, my people? Uh, this is Peter Newton. Checking in for another video. Trying to think about what I was going to say for my intro. But I have no idea. So, howdy. Hope y'all are doing well. Uh, didn't get any side clips for you today. So, I'm going to give you a little bonus content. Let me, let me tell you what happened. I actually interviewed Team Bus Bros manager, a.k.a. Gary Greer. <laughs> Saw Gary and didn't see the bus though. Hadn't seen the school bus in a little bit. So I asked Gary, what's going on? And uh, he told me that that Wink had a little incident with the school bus. I asked him what happened. He told me that apparently the school bus isn't supposed to be floor wide open down the interstate <coughs> for an extended period of time. It gets a little hot. Has some overheating issues with the school bus. It was no problem as long as you watch the gauges. Apparently, um, it wasn't Wink's fault, but um, Gary, hope you don't mind me sharing this story. The gauges broke on the bus. Unfortunately, it got hot because Wink was going pretty quick in the school bus. He didn't know. He knew it was warm or it was getting hot. He, he didn't really know how hot it was because the gauges were broken. Tried to limp it on home because he didn't want to tow all that stuff. They got like 12 bikes. Yep, it, it messed up the pistons real good on the school bus. So, the bus <clears throat> is dead for now. Uh, RRP, Bus Bro School Bus. Uh, they do still have 12 guys out here today. Gary told me that they're up till about 3.30 in the morning working on the bikes. So glad they made it out. It's the Buffalo Hair Scramble in Grover, North Carolina. Some notable things from the start line here. Just looking down at the pro class line, we have a surprise um, surprise guest, Chris Hoyle, to the pro class. And uh, also up here, Cole Madison. So pretty interesting lineup for the pro class. Got a stacked double A, 11 guys today in double A class. And really cool to see uh, the two brothers, Shane and Corey Wicker, alongside their dad, AKA Squatchy. Um, haven't seen Corey in quite some time has been back 258 days back when I used to race uh, race Corey Wicker and his older brother racing my class today Shane Wicker last time I saw him was Denver earlier this year and he was killing it he's on a KTM now sold his Yamaha I don't know if you guys know these people but you should get to know them real cool guys uh, of course all the regulars out here today going down the line on the class it's gonna be Andrew Van Atta Matthew Nix Gary Greer, Keith Mitchell, Dustin Gross, yours truly, Peter Newton, Shane Wicker, Nick Vassy, Dale Brown, Addison Mass, and John Jordan. Let's get ready to go. 15 seconds. Here comes the. Here comes the. Here comes the. Y'all don't really want it like All right, let's jump right into this. We got John Jordan right here on my right side. Got Andrew Van Atta trying to go around the outside. I was trying to go inside. John, John was going inside too, so I got a little caught up there. You got Keith coming around me, snuck around. A couple of quick guys up there. I don't know who the guy was on this Yamaha right here. He took a dip. I think he's good. Pretty sure he's good. Coming down on this, uh, this is the moto track here at the Buffalo, but they didn't run any of the jumps. Try to be safe. You know, if they had put them jumps in, we've been doing backflips and stuff. Can't be having that. A little inside here, big fence post. You could actually cut somebody off pretty good right there if you had to make a pass. So just uh, getting in the groove here, following Keith Mitchell. John Jordan right in front of him, and uh, Van Atta up there, as well as Shane Wicker, 
And uh, maybe... I'm not sure who else is up there. Keith already finding some hotlines here. Saw that big vine, that was pretty wild. And this place here in the bottom is really soft. Some big ruts started developing. The ruts are ready from the mini race. And uh, they were pretty deep towards the later part of the race. You won't get to see that too much. So just try to imagine. But I like this right hander here, be super deep, a couple feet. Made it a little difficult in here, and that's why you can get some alternate lines. You'll see later on some of these guys taking advantage of some of these alternate lines on me, <laughs> unfortunately. No problem though, that's racing. Pretty open here, one of the faster parts of the trail. You'll see it get into the, some of the tighter stuff after not too long. I'd say maybe sixth place or so at the moment. Maybe fifth. Something like that. Because I know I was at, I got into fourth at one point. Beautiful day out here. You can see, uh, let me point out right here, Keith. Started losing his balance there. Got him. Funny thing about that, Keith, uh, after the race he was complaining that I wasn't letting him by. Well, I guess you shouldn't have made that mistake there, buddy. I mean, you were up front. Well, good for him. I guess he'll learn. So he's back here behind me, probably uh, revving and whatnot, trying to get around. But I was trying to focus forward, catch up to John here. Good old J. Frank. Got that YZ250F ripping it. This was slippery, honestly. Uh, looks really good on the camera. Looks can be deceiving. Some of these roots in here and some of this topsoil. It'll get you. I only fell over one time, thankfully. A little sketchy in that rock art in there. That was pretty technical. And uh, this off camera over here. Come on down, down. Uh, there's a right hander up here somewhere. Might be a different spot. It all kinds of blend blend together over time. Couple split lanes. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking about right here. This spot was sketchy. Could get hairy here a few times. I know I saw a couple guys crash pretty good. The other open spots here. Come out in the kudzu field. Pretty interesting. If I do say so myself. Kind of like a grass track. A little bit of full gas style. It was soft out here. Soft everywhere honestly. Um, but getting back to what I was saying earlier, beautiful day out here. I think it was maybe mid 70s or so. And I had under anticipated the conditions. I thought for sure it was going to be a real muddy one, just like I had thought last week in Virginia. Because they had even uh, considered canceling this race based on how much rain they had got. But uh, it looked, I mean, it was good. It was good, honestly. I know there was a few ruts that came about, but no major mud holes or anywhere that you could really get stuck. And as the race progressed, traction was decent. I had a pretty fresh rear tire on, kinda. I run the Millville's on the rear and the Washougal on the front. See whatever John's got is hooking up here pretty good. Going back in the woods to this little straightaway right here. I was just trying to find anywhere, honestly, some place to get around John. He was roosting me pretty good. I did wear the roll-offs today, the Spy uh, Foundation Clearview system. Worked wonderfully. Very large. Kept a nice clear view the whole time. Nice little reminder of some Enduro Trail here. 
have to remember your uh, tree dodging skills. <laughs> I'm not running the full wrap around bark busters, so I gotta be a little careful on there. I don't wanna break any fingers. Snag a pinky on the tree. This comes down into uh, some red clay here and there. Dropping down. That right hander right there is pretty slick. Right over that little log. The wheelie that one. I did almost crash here one time on these roots. I lost my balance there. Not this time around, but just thinking about the race in general. And I know for a fact that uh, basically in a train, there's not really a whole lot of places to pass. Uh, I don't know what kind of gap is on John. Well, the next guy in front of John is going to be Shane Waker. He's got a tiny gap. You can't really see Shane up there, but I know he's up there not too far. And also, Keith is right on my tail with Gary Greer right on him. John got a little sketchy on that hill right there. That hill actually got pretty dug out later on. Big old hole right in the middle. I fell there one time. That was the only place I fell. Coming back in the pines for a little more single track. Definitely couldn't fit any quad trail in here. That's kind of what I like about NCHSA, honestly. So for those of you who are not racing NCHSA, give it a shot. I mean, if you like bike trail, if you like going fast, like really wide open fast trail, not really this type of trail is uh, not really ideal for you. Different people have different appeals though. I like it. Hit this left hander right here, come down the little dirt road. Nice little phone, uh, I don't know what word I just said there, that was weird. A uh, fun spot. <laughs> you had to be careful with some of these rocks and roots and stuff. Get to open it up a little bit in here and keep your eyes peeled and make sure John's not crashing. Funny thing is, I got him on video from uh, Lost Valley. And he said uh, I should have mentioned that it was a video about how not to ride. Just dogging his own form. I don't know. I think he's good. Check this out. Pro line there. Fastest way to get up the hill. And uh, I like to go wide a little bit there. Square up on the hill. So scoring came up really quick on this lap. We're only a few minutes into this. And we went ahead and went through. There's some trail that you haven't seen yet. A little chicane through here. Kind of makes me think about full gas as well. I'm curious. I, uh, I'd have to rewind the video to see who was coming up the hill when I was coming down. I think that was Colton Brown from Pro Class. Maybe. the quality I'm watching this in right now compared to what you guys are going to see is not quite the same so it just looks like red blurs a little bit should have gone inside there uh, just followed in John's footsteps not always the best best plan but it happens switching it up there a little bit on him this right next to the parking lot here Wave to the fans, <laughs> and I want, I got something to point out for you guys up here. Go through these little humps right here, and around this house, like AC unit right here on the left. Dude, I don't know what was going on, but that thing was getting beat up. Maybe somebody hit it or something later on. That thing was all over the place. So full beans right over this hill. That actually drew a lot of attention later on. A little step up. Some fun stuff out here. Nothing really too bad to catch you off guard. I like that spot here. 
until it gets to this uphill. They got really eat out right here later on. This comes back out in the field here pretty soon. Katsu field. Fun stuff. So going to the left right here and uh Pretty sure up here I started getting a little more aggressive on John. I wasn't too too aggressive. Some real passive guy. But I was tired of getting roosted. Little 23. Always makes me think about Michael Jordan. Maybe that's why his number's 23. You know, his last name's Jordan. You know, John Jordan. He's like Michael Jordan. First time I thought about that. John likes to run the steering stabilizer. Interesting. He's more of a fast track kind of guy, he told me. Just trying to find anywhere here to get around John. He held pretty strong holding his lines. And uh, check it out. Sneak peek right here on the right. Ooh. Who's that? We got a husky fin there. He was definitely ready to go. That's Keith Mitchell, by the way. I think he did that a couple times. He got the good old 350. I'm on the 250. A little bit confused here. I uh, thought we were going the wrong way there for a second, but no problem. Colton Brown pointing us the way. One of the tighter spots as well. I was easing into my pace at this point. Later on in the race, I didn't get any of it on video. I was really comfortable weaving in and out of these trees and just carrying a lot more momentum than I was right here. Some of these, there's a couple stumps and stuff in here throw you off balance. Be a few places like that, two ways to go or three ways to go. These hair scrum is all about finding the, the fastest way to go and being able to do that consistently. Kind of cool to mix it up, drop out in some of these fields and get a little more speed up. Some of these turns pretty fun. I'd say a decent flow on most of it. This turn right here is a little tight. See John about to lose it. I kind of did notice John throwing a lot of foot dabs. I don't know what that's all about. I'll keep them feet on the pegs there, John. And uh, he, he definitely threw some style out here on me in a little bit, I'll point out to you guys. A couple off cameras in here. Gotta pay attention. <clears throat> Come up on you by surprise. So, not that spot, but I know there's one rain break that, or water break that John gets pretty sketchy on. So there's Shane Wicker. Maybe he fell or something, but we caught up to him. Nice little inside line there. I missed it at this point. I don't think anybody was hitting it right now. Pretty sure Shane just took off. Um, kind of dropped John up here. That's why I said he probably fell over. So come on down. A little bridge right here. And this hill, this got hairy. These roots start getting eat out super slick. You could easily lose... Uh, your footing or you know your, your rear tire slide out or something fall on that hill you're gonna lose all your momentum makes it tough so that's how I was taking some other lines there was a far right line I didn't take that one my little brother told me it was maybe a little faster who knows 
whatever. I didn't get it stuck there, so no problem. No regrets. This hill was pretty, pretty gradual and rocky. It started beating me up later on. Pretty rooty, pretty rocky there. For those who race it, you would know. <laughs> you probably remember. That was a bad line. I don't know what <clears throat> what the plan was there, but no problem. We got more laps to to experiment with some of the stuff here. Trying to dip between a couple of these trees here and cut in and out. Just fall the arrows. John's doing it pretty well. I do say so myself. He, uh, I mean, if you know, if he was going drastically slower than my pace, I'd be all over him. I really wasn't all over him. For me, towards the beginning of the race, I get a little, um, almost all the time, get arm pump and stuff. So I was running tight right here, not really aggressive or anything, just following his lines mostly and trying not to make any major mistakes so that'll set me way back because I'm not in a bad spot right now. We got a few guys up ahead of me. But this was fun stuff right here. I like all this um kind of Enduro type trail really. John had a good line right here. I took this line every lap left side cross over the middle to the right whatever's the straightest way to go usually straights fast ain't nobody want to be curvy guy they want to be straight guys all right so right there here Not really a whole lot to point out here. There was John right there getting a little sideways. <laughs> I'm sure that that got his attention. There was a pretty big rock in that thing. So we really over the creek right here. That thing got E out later on. Big ruts started developing in here. It's crazy how much of um if I had uh, some comparison video from first to last lap. But nothing like mid east. I mean, th these uh, these trails don't get nearly as beat up as the mid east. And when it starts getting rougher, you get some good lines. That's when I start liking the trail more. I know it beats you up a little more, but I, I don't know. I just feel more comfortable around that. Big wide array of ruts across here come into some sand stuff there's gonna be some more of that sand up here so in addition to some of that content I gave to you guys earlier pretty funny on the start line there's a guy he's been he's been in the dirt bike world for who knows how long but Mitch Mims shout out to Mitch Mims John Jordan was up there on the microphone and he was like oh guys it's Mitch Mims birthday 93rd birthday <laughs> and it was kind of funny because Mitch is not 93 they were just goofing off with him so happy birthday Mitch you got plenty more years you're not 93 man still out here riding here and there proud of you He's a real nice guy. He had let me come over to this place to ride before. Inside line right here. This was the deep sand. But you know, no problem for Texas Pete. There's a Papa Frank. Oh, Papa uh, Jordan. John Jordan's dad right there. I actually learned that today. I had no idea that was John Jordan's dad. He always wears those older style half helmets. Or three quarter three quarter face helmet pretty funny looking not him but the helmet 
And uh, you know who else wears those helmets? I'm sure you guys know. You seen David James out here? Crazy with his three-quarter face helmets. I don't know why he does that. He said it so he can kiss his wife on the start line. I don't know about all that. I don't know. Maybe it's so he can be eating food during the race or something. This is back towards the start line here. Um, that was basically all of the trail. At this point, you've probably seen all of it. This is a cool little spot right here. Sometimes came down this hill a little too hot. Swing uh, wide on that corner is not ideal, but it happened. It was a little soft right here, but you can open it up. Let's see if John breaks the banners. Nope, okay. I know he did go through the banner on the inside there on the start to dodge the guy on the Yamaha that crashed. Trying to remember, um, up here pretty soon is when a little more action is for you guys. Once you get into this soft spot, again with all the ruts. So it started getting a little deeper. At this point, all the guys had been through at least one time. Because we're on some repeat trail. That's how it works in the hair scrambles, making laps out here. This, this trail is 6.9 miles. A little, uh, little shorter for the uh, overall loop on the circuit here compared to some of the other stuff. Especially mid east, you can get up to about 10 mile trail or so. So we we did a bunch of laps. I don't remember exactly how many laps. You can see some of the ruts here. pull out a little bit of information for you guys oh I missed it I was looking down but yeah there went Keith and Gary they found a nice line on me so I tried to keep up with these guys but I was so tight I was just hanging on with my with my teeth at this point I was not flowing well not very comfortable just kind of along for the ride, letting the bike ride me wasn't the way, that's not the way to do it, but that's the way it was happening. It's kind of a frustrating feeling when you're not riding uh, the way that you, that you should, but it happens to the most of us. So alright, I, I uh, relaxed a little bit in the, in the near future of the race. It was fun. Later on, I got to battle with some guys that were pretty close pace-wise. I'm not sure who the guy on the Yamaha two-stroke was. Maybe Nick Vassy. Got to battle with him a good bit. Um, no, it might have been Addison Mast. Not sure. No, it definitely was not Addison Mast. Maybe Nick Vassie. But Shane Wicker as well. Definitely got to ride with him a good bit. Towards the later part of the race, like almost the whole last lap. That rock pile sucked right there. So just a little one last thing for you guys. You can see all the people here. This is the step up. Got to send it one more time. But that's about it. Appreciate you guys. Another weekend marked off the list. Another good time. We'll see you out there for the next one. You think you're jumping me, you best think again. The dirty, I'm the type of man that might go broke on revenge. Had some not so nice friends, kick the dough off the hinge. Take the dough off your bins, pop up off all your friends. Man, please, this is very cynical. Uh -uh. Man, no 
all subliminal. I'm physical, financial, and mental to be a general. Hey, the mama claims she want a soldier. Not the type be in the tank, but in that rover. Man, please, I'm in the zone like AIDS full blown. I'm killing it like a blind man reading. I'm feeling it like, oh, yeah. Here comes the, oh, yeah. Here comes the, oh, yeah.